I'm Dan Hagen and welcome to Up North at 4. Today we'll learn about some northern Wisconsin history. Welcome back to Up North at 4. We're talking history today with a member of the Manitouish Waters Historical Society, Kay Kranz. Kay, it's nice to finally meet you in person. It's nice to see you in person, Dan. Yeah, we did a lot of uh, Zoom things during COVID, so it's glad that we can come together, talk history. And today we're going to talk about two important people from Manitouish Waters, not necessarily Manitouish Waters, but northern Wisconsin. And let's first start with the Al Capone of St. Paul. So tell me about Leon Gleckman. Okay. I think it's really interesting. Um, I'm kind of the person that is the talking point for Dillinger's um, escapades in the Manitouish Waters area. And I was looking one night on the internet, and here I find a kidnapping in Manitouish Waters. And so I started researching, and Leon Gleckman was the kingpin bootlegging guy in St. Paul, often referred to, like you said. And he had a lot of people in his pocket. Whenever you see um, excerpts from newspapers, you see him as a leading politician and business leader mm. in St. Paul. A term that you'd only use if you had people in your pocket in the newspaper, perhaps? <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe, okay. Maybe. Um, I found one article in Brainerd, Minnesota, that said he was a bootlegger and, mm -hmm. and a bad guy, but otherwise it's all this. I'm guessing that clean. publisher maybe got a nasty call yeah. after doing that. Right. Well, tell me how he ended up in northern Wisconsin. Okay, so um, let me just give you a little background. Yeah, sure. He was born in um, Minsk, Russia, in, of, a, huh. in a, of a Jewish family. So he was part of the Jewish uh, underworld. And uh, he came to the United States and grew up in Port Huron, Michigan, and then ended up as a business man in St. Paul. And his headquarters were at the St. Paul Hotel, which is a beautiful, glamorous hotel that he's in. And he has several legitimate businesses. And in the 1920s, during Prohibition, he was laundering money from bootleg and gambling through several of his legit businesses and he had got caught. There was a raid in a company that was a bluing company like dyes and chemicals and he went to prison for a while and then he got out and he got even stronger and more powerful. And laundering money, I'm not very familiar with it, but more or less you take these illegitimate businesses and you funnel the profits through the other businesses? Through the legitimate business. Okay. And then I also want to mention, you do have a slide about uh, the sheriff who was in his pocket as well, right. one of the people mentioned. Tom Brown. Yeah. Okay. All right. So he's in St. Paul. He's doing what gangsters do in the 20s. And he's, he's also leading kind of a double life. He's this big gangster, but he leads a very calm, um, moderate life with his family. Okay. And one day he gets up to go to play golf at his favorite golf course. And he ends up being run off the road and um, a gang of kidnappers get in his car, take him and blindfold him and drive and drive and drive. And I can't imagine what it must have been like. He has no idea where he's going and he's going all the way from St. Paul to Hurley, Wisconsin. Hurley, not a great place during that time. I don't want to offend anybody up in Hurley, but it's a rough place. How about that? It's kind of like the Wild West. Okay. And I think about that more and more that in the early days of the settlement of northern Wisconsin, we really are the Wild West. Lots of bars in the middle of prohibition, lots of gambling, lots of prostitution. So anyways, they get to um, Hurley and they contact a man by the name of um, Clement Vita. And Clement has a saloon and several, several saloons with his son, Joseph. And they hide Gleckman's car in the garage of the um, Vita family and then rent a cottage on the Manitowish chain from the Vitas. So then he's transported, blindfolded again, all the way to the Rest Lake Dam, and the boat is waiting, and they get in a boat, and they row across Rest Lake to the channel between Rest Lake and Stone Lake. And there's a small cottage where he is um, held captive for probably about a week. There's different versions of the exact number of days. And the bandits, 
are asking for $200,000 in ransom, which is quite a sum in 1931. This is September. Yeah. The fall. So Great Depression era too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure back in Minneapolis, St. Paul, people are like, where is, where is Leon? Where is he? Yeah. And all kinds of rumors are going around. One of the rumors is that the Capone gang in Chicago is upset that Gleckman may be trying to move into some of their northwest Wisconsin territory. There's also the idea that maybe some local um, gangsters in St. Paul are taking advantage of the situation and trying to get more power. All kinds of ideas are running around, and some even say maybe he's really not kidnapped. Very intriguing. I think we should take a break. I want to learn how Mr. Gleckman gets out of this pickle. We'll be right back. We're backing up north at four, still talking to Kay Kranz. She is talking about Leon Gleckman, a famous gangster, the Al Capone of St. Paul back in the 1920s. And 30s. And 30s. So he's up in northern Wisconsin, ransom money, $200,000. What happens next? Okay. Um, in St. Paul... A man by the name of Frank Laprie owns um, a, a casino bar. I mean, we're, we're still in Prohibition. I don't know what, how they're advertising these places. Um, but he is part of the gang that has kidnapped Blackman. He is taken for a ride. And in the newspaper article that I read, because the other members of the gang are afraid he's going to squawk. Okay. <laughs> I love that, te that terminology. He's going to talk. He's sure. going to tell. And they beat him to death. Oh, no. So now we have a murder yeah. and a kidnapping. Um, Mrs. Gleckman gets a ransom note from her husband with the $200,000 ask, but also that he's doing just fine, but don't tell anybody about this because I may get in trouble. Okay, so wife is in a pickle here. I'm assuming she goes to the authorities, yes, something like that? Right. Okay. Enter Tom Brown, who is in the pocket of the gangsters in St. Paul. And he begins this great big investigation. Where's Leon Gleckman? And a man by the name of Jack Pfeiffer, another gangster, offers to help. Now, he is in competition with Leon. Hmm. There's even speculation that he's involved in the kidnapping. Okay. Seems like someone you wouldn't trust in this situation. Right, right. And anyways, this $200,000 ask, nobody can come up with that sure. much money. So the next thing we know, it's, well, we'll take 50000 Okay. And then the next thing that happens, we'll take 40000 And they get all the way down to $5,000. Oh and it's agreed upon. Now, when Leon was being taken to the cottage, in his wallet was $1,400. So the total take for this kidnapping was 6400 sure. Yeah. So they ended up getting the money to him, and he came home they safely? They get the money. Okay. It's in Frank Lepre's safe at his hey. saloon. And um, Tom Brown and Jack Pfeiffer come up to northern Wisconsin, Jack Pfeiffer heads out on a boat, blindfolded, to pick up Leon. Okay. And both of them, blindfolded, are rowed back to the Rest Lake Dam, taken to Highway 51, where a car is awaiting them, and they're driven to Ashland, Wisconsin. And the next thing we know, Leon's back in his living room with his wife and two kids. Thrilling story. I wonder, did the people ever get caught? Yes. They did, okay. All five gang members got caught and were sentenced to prison for many years. The sixth guy, Frank Lepre, mm -hmm. deader than a doornail. Whoa. Okay. Thrilling story from 20s and 30s prohibition time, northern Wisconsin. Now, Anything after else? the fact, yeah, I ahead. wanted to tell you this. Um, so a whole bunch of deputies and detectives from St. Paul go to Hurley, even the district attorney of St. Paul, Minnesota. And there's quite a, a stir in, in Hurley. And they take um, 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 Clement and his son Joseph into custody, and they um, interrogate him for hours and hours in Hurley. <laughs> and and um, 
the guys said, well, we didn't know who they were. We had no idea there was a kidnapping. We thought there was just a big shot bootlegger coming up here. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting that that might be just a normal visit. Yeah. But oh, we just thought he was a big shot bootlegger. Yeah, a normal criminal. Yeah. yeah. So um, they, they released him, and um, uh, Clement had to end up going and um, testifying in some of the... Uh, court cases for the gang that was arrested because there's people to identify. And then Tom Brown goes to the safe of Frank LaPree, takes that $6,400 out of the safe, and he uses it as campaign money to run for the, for the county sheriff, Ramsey County Sheriff, Ramsey County, Minnesota. He loses. I think deservedly so. Yeah, it seems pretty <laughs> crooked move yeah. there. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, okay, Kay, thanks so much for joining us in Up North F4. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back after the break.